Welcome to A State of Sight. I'm your host, Isaac Porter from Lowry Porter Ophthalmology, and this is your weekly update in ophthalmology and eye care, coming right here from Raleigh, North Carolina. In this episode, I like to explain corneal high drops. It starts with an H. You can see the name in the title, which is a problem that occurs in some patients that have keratoconus. To better understand this, first let's review what keratoconus is, which is a problem on the cornea or the clear shield that covers over the front of the eye. In people that have keratoconus, instead of having a normal dome shape, the cornea can start to bulge and protrude forward to take on more of a cone shape. This can cause a large amount of astigmatism and distortion in the vision that can keep people from seeing the best that they can. Over time, this usually progresses but if patients make it into their 40s, 50s, and 60s with keratoconus, the changes usually become less and less. A lot of times this is seen as early as the teens or the 20s, and patients may notice that glasses do not correct the vision the best that it could be anymore. With this, they may need to move to rigid contact lenses in order to get their best vision. As the keratoconus continues to progress and becomes thinner, the cornea, and more of a cone shape, they may have difficulty wearing contact lenses. And once this happens, they may have to have a corneal transplant in order to restore the cornea to a more normal shape and so they can finally wear a contact lens again or get better vision. Corneal high drops happens when the cornea becomes so thin and bulging forward that there's a break on the back layers of the cornea. This break then allows the natural fluid inside the eye to go into the cornea. Usually the cornea is thin and clear, but when fluid can enter, it becomes swollen and thicker. This can cause pain, sensitivity to light, and patients can notice they get a red eye that starts just out of the blue. When corneal high drops happens, it may take some time, but usually it improves. The break on the back layer of the cornea will eventually heal, seal itself back over, and then give the cornea a chance to become thin again once it can pump out the water or the fluid that is swollen into the cornea. This can be sped along in process if we put an injection of air or gas into the front of the eye to allow the gas bubble to come up against the back of the cornea and help to seal off the break more quickly. People that don't have this could try using drops to make the cornea more clear, but usually will take longer to heal, maybe up to two or three months. In the end, once a patient has recovered from this, we will take a look, see how clear the cornea is, and then decide if they will need a corneal transplant or if we can get their vision back into contact lenses to get them seeing more clearly again. It depends a little bit on how much scarring there is. I'd like to give you more details about high drops, but we're out of time for today. So if you have any questions, please comment. We look forward to interacting with you, and we hope to see you again soon on A State of Sight.